What's up everybody? So today we're going to be going over the Spider-Man web effect. If you haven't seen it yet, here it is. So there's just a couple things we're going to be breaking down. There's kind of three main portions this effect is going to include. There's going to be creating the actual web inside of Element, all done with some of the primitives that they give you. After that, we're going to be using the puppet tool to simulate the reaction the reaction with my finger that you saw in the original, and finally just some compositing techniques that went into creating this. There's gonna be a link down in the description below where you can download the footage that I shot for this uh, and follow along exactly. However, it's not entirely necessary. If you wanna just create it inside of After Effects and not comped onto footage, you can do that as well or I encourage you to go out and shoot your own. Either way, there's gonna be a link down in the description. All right, so here we are in Adobe After Effects. As you can see on the left-hand side in the project panel, I already have all of my footage imported. These are the files that you'll find in the Google Drive link down in the description. I'm gonna briefly show you what each one uh, is used for and how I set it up before getting into the actual effects. So the first thing you're gonna do is get these two clips here, 0478 and 0479. I'm gonna grab first the 78, drag it into a new comp like that. Then I'm gonna find around the moment I'm about to start pushing the button and hit Alt open bracket on the keyboard to trim up to that point. And then again, hit Alt home to bring it back to the beginning of our timeline. Now we're gonna move forward until just after I push the button and look up, hit Alt close bracket. And then another handy shortcut is hit N on the keyboard to trim your composition down to that length. Next, right click on the work area indicator and click trim comp to work area, and there you go. Next, we're going to grab clip 0479, drag it on top, and in this one, I quickly panned over to the right. So we're gonna drag this clip forward until we find the spot where I pan, oh, there it is. Hit T on the keyboard to bring up opacity and turn it down to around 50% so you can see me underneath it. What we're gonna wanna do is line up the two clips so I start panning right after I push the button. So we're gonna move that forward. One more. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. So as you can see, I hit the button and then the pan begins. So we can turn opacity up to 100 again and drop the clip down below 0478. Next, we're gonna draw a very quick mask around me, just like this. There we go. Now we're going to move back before the camera begins panning just as it's about to move. Hit P on the keyboard to bring up the position information for the layer that has me in it and click the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Move forward until just after I would be out of frame. I think that's about, let's see, one, two, three, four frames. Click the stopwatch. Then drag me, you can hold shift so you can't go up and down. Drag me out of frame right about there. Now next, as you can see, I'm beginning to move a little faster than my pan, as my pan is a ramp of speed. It starts off slow and progressively gets faster. Uh, the way we can mimic that is by clicking on the keyframe, right click, keyframe assistant, ease, ease out. Now that still didn't quite do it as it is better, it's not all the way there. What you need to do is make sure you have your keyframe selected and then click this symbol here to open the graph editor and drag forward this Bezier curve as far as it'll let you, and then close, and then there you go. It's beginning to move about exactly how it needs to to match the pan. It's not perfect, however, the way to blend this uh, pretty seamlessly is to turn on motion blur for both the composition and the layer, and if you play it back full speed, you can't even tell. All right, the very next clip I worked on was this one, 0477. Drag that into a new composition, and then we're going to find a spot right as I'm panning away. Hit Alt, Alt, close bracket to trim at the end of the clip right there. Now move forward just a little bit, maybe about this long. Alt, open bracket, Alt, home, as we pressed before. Go to the end, hit N on the keyboard, right click, trim to work area. We need to right click on it, choose time, time reverse layer. And when you play these two clips together, it blends very seamlessly. All right, so we have these last two clips here to set up. We have 0487 and 0488. First grab 87, drag that into a new comp. Let's go right about to the beginning, right when I start leaning up and pulling my hand forward. 
just as before, Alt open bracket, Alt home. We're gonna go about to right before it shakes. The reason it shakes is because I actually was pushing my skateboard along the ground to get this dolly motion. Because uh, I filmed this alone, no one was there with me. My floor had a slight slant in it, so it actually worked out very nicely. So right before my skateboard crashes into the wall and shakes the camera, we're gonna hit Alt, close bracket, and on the keyboard, right click, trim to work area. Next, we're gonna grab 0488, drag that on top. We're gonna move this forward. Now this is the exact same motion with my skateboard. The only difference is I'm not in it and neither is the false web that I created out of actually some hot glue. The reason I got this is because I knew I would want a blank plate for the background in order to remove my false web I put there as a stand-in. So what we need to do is hit T on the keyboard, bring up opacity for the top layer, 0488, bring it down to about 50, and move it forward until it about lines up with the movement. You can see it's not perfect, but it actually works out fairly well. Turn the opacity back up to 100, drag 88 below 87, and now the next step of this clip would be to draw a mask around the web, hit M on the keyboard and change add to subtract. And then what you'll need to do is hit the keyframe for mask path and go through and keyframe out and roughly try and get rid of the old web. It's a little bit of a process. I'm just roughly doing it right now. And as you can see, the bottom clip does not line up as you get to the end, and that's okay. All you need to do is just go to where it does line up, set a keyframe for position, line it up as best as you can, move forward if it's off, reline it up, move forward some more, reline it up. Just like that. It's a super simple process. And then the last thing you need to do to blend it is go to the top layer, hit F for feather, and turn that up somewhere around maybe 40. Last note to make before we're finished with this clip and we go into actually creating the web is when my finger drops down here, it actually goes underneath the clip. So as you can see, it's fading out. The way to fix that is to duplicate the layer with my finger in it hit M on the keyboard and delete the mask. Then you actually need to rotoscope out the finger. And again, the way you would do that is draw a rough mask, hit M, keyframe mask path, and just roughly go through and rotoscope out. It's a very simple process. All right, now we can jump back over into our 0478 composition and begin working on the web. But before we do that, please control S or file save. It's very important. Can't tell you how many projects I've started over because of that. The last thing you'll find in the Google Drive folder is this panorama of the living room that I took with my iPhone. It's not a perfect equirectangular map, so it won't stitch seamlessly as an environment. However, it does work perfectly just to try and roughly match reflections and shadows, especially on translucent objects where it mostly just needs to act as the background. So here in Comp 0478, what you're gonna wanna do first is highlight both your clips hit Control shift c on the keyboard to pre-compose it, and I'm just gonna name this Footage 1. Now we just have the whole shot in one easy clip to work with. Next, hit Control y to create a new solid. I'm gonna call this Element 3D, hit Enter. Obviously, it doesn't matter what color it is. Next, I'm going to preach to you guys a little bit, so hear me out. Download Effects Console, it is the coolest thing ever. Control space because I've set element to my favorites and then hit enter and it's just that quick compared to having to navigate through the menu and click it you can actually just do it that fast I'm telling you this for two reasons one it's super convenient and I think everybody should be using it especially because it's free and two I'm so in the habit of using it now that I will be using it in this tutorial a little bit obviously every effect that I use can be found through the menu or through the hotbar over here but I will be navigating it through Effects Console by hitting Control Space and typing in that way. So now that we have our solid with element applied, we're gonna go into the scene setup and this is where we will create our web. By the way, I'm in element version two. Unfortunately, you can't do this in version one because they do not have the distort modifier. So 
If you don't have version two, I recommend you upgrade. First, go to create, and then let's create a cylinder. The cylinder then needs to be rotated. You can hold shift, snap it 90 degrees. Zoom out here a bit, here we go. And then I'm going to change the radius down to something crazy small, maybe around 0 0.05. And then the height I'm gonna change to maybe about 25. That looks pretty good. Next, we need to change the height segments up all the way as high as it'll go to 200. The more you have, the better. And believe it or not, the web is already almost done. Before closing out, the last thing you need to do is drag it all the way to the right so that way the end of the web is in the center. Then click this nifty little button here to move the anchor point back to the center. And then the web is finished. We might come back to refine, however, this is the base for it. Click OK. Next, we need to create a new camera, layer, new, camera. I was shooting in this particular scene on a 50 millimeter lens, so that is what we will be using. Next, we're going to click and hold on this tool and change it to the orbit camera tool and rotate it until it seems to match perspective fairly well. Looks pretty good. We're going to click and hold one more time, change to the XY camera tool, move it in one more time, track Z, zoom out just a touch. Looks pretty good. We don't want the end, I don't know if you can see here, we don't want the end to be showing, so we need to zoom in so that's gone. Then we need to track back so it's centered. And there we go. That is our web. Now, obviously, there's a lot that we still need to do to this to make it look like the web from the movie. So let's go ahead and get started. Click on your element layer. Click on group one and open that up. Click on particle look, open that too. Click on deform click on noise, click enable, and then we're going to change the intensity up to about 0.5. Shouldn't look like much yet. You might be able to see that a tiny bit. Next, we need to change the scale. I found that a number around 700 looked good for me. However, it's up to your personal preference. Now, I said earlier that we might wanna go back and refine. I'm calling that in already. We're gonna go back to the scene setup and I'm gonna make this web a little skinnier. We're gonna go from 0.5 maybe to 0 0.035. There, I think that looks pretty good. Click OK. And there we go. We are good to go. The web is pretty much finished. Um, the last thing that we need to do is animate it. So we are going to go to the particle size, X, Y, and Z. And then we are going to change the particle X size. So let's go forward until the moment where the web should be coming out, right when I hit the button. Let's back up. At this frame, we're gonna click on the stopwatch for X size and change it down to zero. Move forward, maybe three frames, and change it to one. So now if you play this back, you can watch the web is coming out like that. Now the next thing we need to do before compositing the web to match the footage is animate our camera so that way obviously it doesn't go off screen like that as it is right now. So the way to do that is to go to the first frame it moves, hit P on camera, and then hit Shift and then R to open up rotation as well. And we're gonna create a keyframe for the position and the orientation of the camera. Move forward four frames and we're going to rotate the camera and move this first value down quite a bit until it looks about like that. And just like we did with our footage earlier, if you watched that portion of the tutorial, is we're going to highlight these two keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease out. Then we're going to click on the graph editor, grab these two Bezier curves and drag them forward. Let's actually move these two keyframes forward one. Now, if you go frame by frame, you can see the web is matching perspective of the pan. The only issue is that it's a little too small. It doesn't fill the frame as you would want it to. The way I did that is I just faked it by moving this keyframe forward so that way the camera does zoom in as it's moving, just like that. And then lastly, we need to turn on motion blur for element 3D. and we should be good, just like that. 
Now the moment it stops moving on this frame right here is where the comp is going to end. So hit N on the keyboard and that is where the render will stop. If you play it back, it should look something about like that right now. I wanna say a big disclaimer before we begin compositing. I'm kind of rushing through this for the sake of the tutorial. Everything obviously needs to be refined a little bit further, such as this movement. Uh, it, you know, it kind of crosses the hand there. It doesn't look perfect, so don't copy my exact values. Go ahead and do what you think looks best, obviously, especially if you're working on your own footage. Anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and begin making this web match our scene. Now. To do that, I'm going to change the X size back up to one just for this one frame. Do not forget to change it back to zero and just delete the keyframe we created. And I'm also going to turn off motion blur for the composition. So that way we can really focus on what we're doing. There are two major steps to making this match. The first one is to grab our panorama I talked about earlier and drag that below our footage. You can even shut it off if you don't want to worry about it showing up in the scene. Go to Element 3D, find Custom Layers, and under Custom Texture Maps, Layer 1, select the image. Now we're going to go to the Scene Setup, click on Environment, and then change the environment to Custom Layer 1. Now the last thing before closing out is go to the Presets, and click on this folder of Physical Materials. Select the one that says Glass, and drag it over to our cylinder, and we should be good to go. Click OK. Before going any further, go ahead and close this custom layers rollout. We're going to go down to the render settings, find physical environment, and then click show background. So as you can see, the only thing in the background of the environment is the wall. And of course, that's not how it should be. So under the render settings and the rotate environment dialog, we need to change its Y rotation until we can see that little window that was in the background right about there, let's put it there. And then next, I'm going to cheat the X rotation down just a touch. That looks about good to me. All right. And then next, go ahead and turn off the show in background. Uh, the environment is matching. However, the panorama I took is way too cool. Uh, the color tones do not match the footage that I shot. So to fix that, what we need to do is select our panorama. Go ahead and turn it on for visibility. Hit Control shift c to pre-compose it. We're going to select Leave All Attributes, then click OK. Now, double-click and open up this composition with the panorama in it. Select the panorama, and we're going to add a Curves adjustment to it. Now, go to the red value, boost that. Go to the blue value, pull it back down. Next, we're going to go to the RGB, make it a little darker. Now we can go back to our composition and see how that has affected our web. It's looking pretty good. All right, now back in this composition, go ahead and select uh, our Element 3D layer. Uh, I'm going to add a curves adjustment to that as well. And we're going to even further warm up this web by increasing the red just a hair and pulling down the blue. That looks pretty good to me. Go to the RGB and let's darken this up some, maybe play with the contrast a hair. That looks pretty good. Again, guys, it's all up to your preference. However, I'm liking where it's at right now. Next, we need to go to the camera settings. So open that up, find the camera options rollout, and then we're going to turn on the depth of field. As you can see, our settings are a little uh, jacked up. I'm not sure where yours are sitting at by default. I think it's the last time you used the camera. It remembers what you had it on. So let's go ahead and change our focal distance. Now we did zoom out very far, so I'm gonna guess somewhere maybe around 4,500 is where the beginning of the web focus is. Looks like we're pretty close. I'm going to change the aperture up to maybe about 75, just so it gets very blurry as it gets closer to the camera. Now, it looks like we need to change our focal distance like a lot more, as the back of this web is where our focal point should be. So let's crank it up to somewhere about 9,000, see what that looks like. There we go, that looks pretty good. I'm going to change the blur level up to somewhere maybe about 260%. Our focal point's hitting just after the web, somewhere around here. So we need to push it back even further. Let's try 9,500. 
There we go, that's pretty good. Now lastly, we need to close out the camera options, click on element, hit U on the keyboard to open up its keyframe information. And the one we created earlier, just so we could see the web needs to be deleted. So go ahead and select it and hit delete on the keyboard. Lastly, go ahead and turn back on the motion blur for the comp and this shot should be about good. And there it is, as you can see, we did a pretty good job at recreating the effect from the original. We went over setting up the footage and creating the web in Element 3D and the different techniques that went into that. In part two, which is coming very soon, I am working on it right now, we will be covering creating the web splat against the door as well as the web pluck shot with the finger interaction. I know that that's what a lot of you came for, so hang on, part two will be coming soon. Thank you for your patience, you guys. Please comment below on this video and let me know if there's anything about what I've covered so far that you would like me to elaborate on, and I will be sure to get to that in part two. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe if you're interested in more tutorials. I'm planning on turning this into a whole Marvel series.